I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got the good video with the small one in the Islands of Ice. We'll talk about the tactics, replay, and the video. And as always, thank you guys for supporting the channel. If you want to be part of the team and support the channel and you appreciate what we're doing here, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support. As always, at 4,000 subs, doing another premium DD giveaway or actually another premium giveaway, which will be really, really fun. And uh, we'll, we're excited for that. As always, growing the channel. As always, talking about how that we can do better in clan battles, tactics, and even just if, if just your overall gameplay this may help you out in making decisions especially in the dd role that i really do enjoy playing so we're in the small one right here in the north of islands of ice and a really really fun map i do enjoy this map a lot notice that during clan battle season is seven versus seven you're having two in battleships maximum with many as many cruisers and destroyers as you can current uh, the makeup of this one we have a small one and a gearing and we have the moscow marseille saint martin about two radars there. We have the Sicily and the St. Vincent uh, in the rear as well for as battleships. Uh, not really caring about what the enemy is because the enemy can come up with all types of things, but right now it's just a standard 2-4-2 two, two kind of setup. We are an Islands of Ice with Alpha Bravo being our ca priority caps right here in this particular uh, the engagement that we decided to do with. And how we're going to execute this is well, me and the actual other uh, destroyer are actually going to bully the destroyer at Alpha. That is our mission right there. We decided that, hey, we're going to try to bully uh, Alpha with two destroyers because it e Bravo is an easy gimme cap, so we're just going to use a battleship and a cruiser to move to Bravo and support that way. And whatever enemy flank uh, approaches this, whether it be a direct frontal assault or rear, we have them to actually be able to hold by grabbing cover or just hold in this general area to retreat and just maintain that defensive posture while the majority of the team will push Alpha. So we'll have one of the battleships and another cruiser actually go out to the flanks here, providing cover into these areas right here, which is the biggest concern. The biggest one is this island right here. A lot of people find that uh, this could be a, a very good, easy cover spot, and especially this one in the south here, because it, as soon as the we spawn, most enemy players kind of typically just want to just drive right here and uh, just, you know, grab cover, battleship going right there as well. So we'll usually see an enemy go right here or an enemy go right here. So we want to have at least somebody to cover that flank, make sure that they're not going to just go take an easy shot and flank us uh, right through there. That's the mentality of that process. And, of course, uh, as always, we are also going to bring in uh, another... Uh, cruiser as well. We'll have the majority wall five on, at Alpha and two at Bravo. The other cruiser will linger in support somewhere in this general vicinity, whether in the, in the back or right here, providing some kind of firepower and supporting cover as well. Boat destroyers will enter Alpha and uh, hopefully not enter right away. That's kind of like my mentality is I don't want to enter right away rush to my death nowadays. I'm kind of waiting to figure out where's the destroyer at, where's the radar at. And so that gives me, and also as a good destroyer player, you want to have an egress route. You want to have an exit strategy. You don't want to just rush in because if I go just straight into Alpha, boom, I'm either blocked by the island or two, I'm blocked right here or I'm radar and I'm just being shot at and, and it takes a while to move these ships out of the way. So very, very important that you have an exit strategy. My exit strategy for this particular uh, cap right here at Alpha will be either turn or egress and go behind the island right here or egress back into the north and use engine boost running away that way. Our gearing will then enter just the very tip of Alpha, kind of test the waters, see what's going to happen. If you use radar, basically exit to the north and that gives us a lot of exit strategies for that particular role bringing also gearing also helps us smoke up and provide torpedo power and he can turn back around and they kind of camp right in this middle area there. Most people like to camp at that spot, whether they get radar or whatnot, then it's really hard to shoot right behind that island. So very, it gives a lot of good cover right there. So that's kind of our basic opening strategy. Let's take a look at the debrief and see, uh, actually look at the replay and we'll take a look at the, after the replay, the, the debrief and see how it actually turned out. 
All right, team, here is the map, Islands of Ice, and we are out here positioning at Alpha here. We got both DDs going to Alpha to bully the other destroyers, and again, we're positioning there with San Martin, Sicily, at Bravo, so it looks like we're doing a heavy push at Alpha like we talked about in the uh, strategy uh, setup, and let's take a look at how this is going to play out right now. So again, we are uh, looking for the your enemy, so we have RPF located at the southern portion of Alpha. Now, we're not going to rush in like I've normally been seeing a lot of players. This is highly clan battles, especially at the beginning of the season. You got all the Typhoon, Hurricane Leagues out there trying to uh, basically move for position. They get their first uh, rounds into the after Gale to go to Squall. And you got to play very, very conservative and seeing where they're at, not rushing the cap, rushing to your death to die. Again, we're just trying to take out and making sure that, hey, we're keeping their destroyer at bay. Notice that the Alvaro de Bazan is way off in the distance as RPF is locating. So we are know that it's safe to push in Alpha. We are well outside their radar range. Stalingrad's got 12 and Salem's got eight and a half. So we definitely know, definitely know that we're not a th in a threat environment right there. Gearing had took a hit from a, a torpedo. So going to be very, very cautious in where we're going to position the gearing. Now we do not want to lose our gearing in this, uh, this engagement. So we're going to try to do our best to help him out. We got Marseille and Vincent out to the northwest, northwest quadrant, that is, so that we can at least have some maybe pro possibly crossfire shots, keeping their Stalingrad and their other Schlieffen at bay. Notice that we also have our Cecilia holding down the middle with Wisconsin pushing in the middle. So we're going to see where this plays out right here. We're going to speed a little bit up to see where it's going. RPF is now locating Wisconsin. 11.4 is the newest target, so it means the other destroyer closest target to the south is at least about 11 kilometers away at least. So we definitely know where our threats are just by using RPF. Launch a spread of torpedoes that direction right there. And now we're going to figure out what is the enemy team going to do? Are they going to push? Are they going to just try to eliminate a player or two. So let's take a look at where this is going to go. We got Moscow Radar. We know the Alberta was on is over there. Just trying to figure out. We're going looking back and forth. Head on a swell to figure out where is the uh, the Wisconsin enemy push going to go. We lose our Moskva to the Stalingrad right uh, through the, I don't know if it's a bow shot or was it through the stern or is it through the superstructure. So we'll have to take a look at that. But right now we have their Schlieffen not being hit at all, only about 4,000 damage on them. So we're going to open up and go ahead and try to melt as much as we can. Small and very good at DPM gunpower. Uh, unfortunately, these shells are very, very wonky. We get a torpedo hit there. I wasn't really sure what hit uh, and what it did what damage where. Uh, but we got some lucky torpedo hit. That's very good. We start a fire on the Schlieffen, which is good. We got a nice smoke from our gearing right there. So it's awesome teamwork. We are waiting to see what is the enemy team going to do here. Let's see if they begin to push up. We've got the Salem moving forward. So he goes undetected. Nobody's spotting for him there. That's what the downside of not having all the destroyers spread out. We do give up a lot of that spotting that people will have to spot on their own. Let's take a look. We launched torpedoes in the direction of the Schlieffen. Okay, and it looks like a Schlieffen is going to try to push our St. Vincent, so we're going to do our best to start melting as much uh, as we can off the Schlieffen. And notice the Salem is pushing, so we have to keep in mind the 8.5 kilometer radar that we have. And Albert Bazan is also pushing with the Salem, so it looks like we may have to give up Alpha Cap because we are being overwhelmed by four ships to the, uh, our three over here with gearing running away there. Marseille is also in full retreat. So repositioning, I don't call it a retreat, I call it really tactical repositioning uh, so that we can get a better shot and we lose our gearing to Wisconsin. Very accurate guns there. You got to be very, very careful. Notice we're still firing, putting as much firepower, maximizing the use of the smoke. One another 43 seconds going on. So we are going to go ahead and take advantage of that. Marseille takes a shot on the Schlieffen. He goes down. Very good shot right there. And now we are uh, figuring out what is the next threat right now. Alberta Bazan is somewhere in the middle and we're just trying to make sure that we don't get hit uh, by him. And we're going to see if we can reposition, get out of the way. Delver de Bazan does have that gimmick burst fire uh, mode. So we don't want to take a lot, a lot of damage from that. So we're going to go ahead and do a tactical repositioning here and get on this Wisconsin and help our Cecilia out. Cecilia, very powerful with the sap secondaries. And you know, look how wonky these shots are. Even at 12 kilometers, I got to really, really lead this thing. I might even have to minimize uh, some of the um, U UI interface here so I can see where these shots are landing. Notice I'm putting the 16, 18 number on my horizon tick marker just to get a, uh, a better aiming and understanding of these shell uh, flight times and characteristics. Okay, he is slowing down there, so we're just walking the shells on. I'm see, I'm watching where the shells are landing. I'm just kind of readjusting every few shots, and hopefully we can get some on our superstructure, which is all our guns can really do. I'm trying to start as many fires as we can. Notice we are taking fire from somewhere 
Uh, incoming fire alert was active, so we're going to make sure that we get that. Z42 is also helping take out the Cilia, but not until the Cilia's secondaries, SAP secondaries, taken out the Z42, which is awesome there. Now it's just us in the Wisconsin, so we're going to have to figure out if we can at least help our St. Martin at Bravo out. He is firing on the Wisconsin. This is the, the uh, good coordination of focus fire and communication so that we can help each other melt this Wisconsin now because Wisconsin is very, very deadly with the F key. I mean, he can basically uh, bring back all his heals and come back really quickly. St. Vincent takes out the Stalingrad. Very, very good right there on burning him down. Now we're going to go ahead and make sure that we are continuously laying down fire and torpedoes best we can. Marseille takes out our St. Martin. He basically flanked him right there. And uh, unfortunately, it was unable to survive that onslaught. So now it's just us taking on the Wisconsin, holding off Bravo flank. And notice we have not let go of this button. We are still firing at least how many? About 100 plus shell hits right here. And even though it's willering down 289 a little bit here and there, it is still damaged, ladies and gentlemen. Never, ever, ever give up. Keep on firing. Not sure why the Wisconsin is not aiming at us. I was thinking that he would at least take a shot at us. But unfortunately, he thinks we are not as a bigger threat. And he goes down. That goes splash. One, 78,000 damage in the first eight minutes right there. So now we know where Marseille is at capping Bravo. And it looks like we're going to have to rely on our team at Alpha. We do lose the, Sa the St. Vincent to the Salem right now. Now, at this point, we think it's a loss, right? Three caps down. We're up. We're down two or one ships, three to two here. And now all we have left is our Marseille firing on the Sam. Hopefully it gets. Oh, and oh, my goodness. We have Alvarez de Bazan coming up. Way to go, Marseille. Taking on Sam. Now it's just two on two. Now it's our turn to take the lever. Damn the torpedoes. Full speed ahead. We activate engine boost and just become some kind of a major speed threat, taking as much fire as we can. I believe he just used his burst fire. He is not firing on us because that burst fire does have a significant reload. And unfortunately, he's not firing. So we're going to try to become an unpredictable target. Not until we destroy him right there. Just melted him right down. Upwards on. And now it's just us and the Marseille. Marseille and Marseille. Hopefully, they can duke it out. But unfortunately, he's going to fire at us at the small end. We take an okay hit. That was good juking right there. So that avoided a majority of his shots. Those three front turrets. Very, very scary and deadly. He has 54,000 health. We have to melt. 54,000 health, and this is the display of the onslaught of what the small one can do. The power, here it is, he just fired us. We're gonna go hard left and making sure we have a damage steering, but we're gonna do as much as we can to throw off his shots. We're still going full speed, and he's going right into our torpedoes. Hopefully he doesn't have his hydro up, so we're gonna see if he takes an onslaught of this. Very, very powerful, I and mean, this is awesome. The power of the small one does everything. Look at that damage right there, down to at least 20,000. We're gonna keep the fire button going and keep it uh, providing firepower downrange onto his superstructure. That's what we're aiming for. See if we can start another fire. He just damaged Con right there. Hopefully we can get a perma fire and get him out of the game. Marseille is in uh, our our flank right here and hopefully he's taking fire but no he is still thinking we are a threat there we turn hard right to throw off the shells and now we're going to slam on the brakes and then bring the throttle back up to throw off some angling shots right here still becoming that increasing increasing threat that he is still aiming his guns at us right here not worrying about the marseille and let's see if we can win this thing can we win it by a kill and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. We survive with 8,000 health left, and that, even though we don't have any of the caps, we win the game by that last powerhouse uh, work through with the small end at the last final minutes right there, and really, really awesome. 153,000 damage, ladies and gentlemen, for the small end. No wonder this, this ship is so powerful. Borderline OP, and uh, as uh, some people think, broken OP. But that was awesome. Sheer firepower right there. 449 shots for 85,000 damage. 31,000 with the torpedo and also tons of tons of fire damage. And that's exactly what we want, especially in these short, uh, small little engagements in the games right there. And small end just bringing a ruckus, bringing the pain. So if you guys want to take a look at the... Um, and the uh, replay video and to see how it actually turned out we'll talk about it there and the build will be at the end of this uh, the uh, video as well all right let's take a look at how the game actually ended up turning out to uh, work the way it did so let's take a look at uh, our push here we had two destroyers go there we had our one cruiser of moscova and of course we had the marseille out here saint martin went out here with the uh, cecilia and that was the engagement there and this is kind of how it looked uh, they had their Albert Bazan, their other cruiser, I believe. I forgot which one it was. Their Schlieffen tried to push, and of course, this is kind of it was a it was a simple three, um, three versus four three uh, split that they did. And I think I put an extra too many in here. No, or did I? No, I did it right. All right, so we had 
this kind of makeup right here. Oh, yep. Oh, wait. Four or five. Yeah, eight. Too many. Uh, so we need to remove one. There we go. This is kind of what it looked like. They did a push with the Z42 in their Battleship Wisconsin, and this is kind of how it looked at, uh, at the end of the video there. So where, where was the, the problems that we had, and what, what did they have? So we capitalized on the fact that they were pushing, and we were able to eliminate one ship at a time. Uh, at the end of the day, they could have easily just kept Bravo and Charlie, and we were so far away that trying to cap these things would have been very difficult. I think that's where the downfall of their team went, where they didn't have to push. They just started losing too many ships at the very end there. So uh, what actually turned out happening was, so they, we eliminated, let's see here, one, we eliminated their destroyer, the, I'm sorry, we took out one of their cruisers and the battleships, and we lost our um, cruiser Moscow there initially, and then, of course, we lost our uh, battleship uh, to, or we are, sorry, gearing initially right there as well in the beginning, in the middle. We lost our battleship to uh, St. Vincent to the Salem, and all they had left was their their destroyer. And then at the end, they had we lost our Cecilia to the Z-42 in Wisconsin, and that was eliminated there. This is kind of what the end of the match looked like, that the their Marseille was able to take our St. Martin out. And this is the final round that we saw. And what they could have done, literally, was the enemy already had Bravo and Charlie, they could have easily just had the Alpha Burz on, cap Alpha, and then run away. Their Marseille intended to want to just continue pushing hard. Not really sure what the, the thought process. Let me know what you guys think. What, what was their process of thinking there? They were head on points and they had all the caps. We were just going to go in and push, and then we were going to retreat. And this is where that engagement happened and where we just engaged the Marseille. And we knew he was capping Bravo. We were just turning back around and maybe take Alpha back and then get the uh, Alpha Burzon the way out. Uh, the Alpha Burzon just kept pushing for some reason. I wasn't really understanding that. Man, just luck in our favor. Pushed right there, right into us and into our Marseille. Marseille was able to come out and capitalize on that and help us out. And then, of course, the Marseille pushes right here and eliminate and just win the game, literally on just, just sheer destruction of everybody right there. So winning hard, and uh, that's kind of how it actually turned out. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me th know what you guys think of the comments below. The build will be at to the end of the video, and let me know your thoughts on the small one as well. And hope you guys are doing well. Until the next time, until the next battle, you guys stay safe. And you see, out, see me out there, say hi, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.